Now you guys can hear me. This is excellent. Great. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. This is our fifth week um, of creating these fun stories together, which is really exciting. This week's story is called How to Cure Intergalactic Hiccups the Hard Way, which is a pretty accurate depiction of what the story is. Uh, Martians are very happy things. They love to eat food and never get full. Werbel is the only exception to that rule. Werbel is the only Martian with a sensitive stomach. There are no solutions for Werbel sickness on Mars, but there is a legend of a cure. Deep in the caves of their planet are ancient cave drawings that tell a story of a medicine that can put out heartburn. The medicine was sent from Mars to another planet in the solar system and hidden in a glass pyramid. Werbel and his best friend Breedy decided to leave Mars in search for the cure for heartburn. The Martians' first stop was the solar system's ninth planet from the sun, Pluto. Pluto is made up of one-third water, but it's all frozen. Werbel and Breedy stop in to have a Plutonian Glacier slushy, the coldest drink in the whole solar system. Surely that will cure his heartburn. Werbel ordered the biggest Plutonian Glacier slushy he could find and gulped it down in one big slurp. Just as he sipped his very last drop, it felt as though his whole brain had been turned to ice. The slushy didn't cure his heartburn, it gave him brain freeze. They ask many Plutonians for help, but Plutonians are used to the cold and don't get brain freeze. With a frozen brain and a fiery chest, Werbel and his friend, Breedy, got back into their spaceship to try another planet. Breedy suggested visiting the solar system's biggest planet, since the smallest planet just caused them more problems. Jupiter was famous for their 67 moon cheese, a special cheese made from pieces of all 67 of Jupiter's moons. Werbel was more careful this time. He ordered the smallest slice of cheese and instead of eating it all at once, he took one very small bite off the corner. Unfortunately, the cheese didn't do anything but make Werbel's tummy rumble. Werbel gave the rest of his cheese to Breedy to try. Breedy nibbled on the small cheese slice and it joined it very much until it too gave him a rumbling tummy. Full of rumbles, the Martians got back in their spaceship and decided to try a planet more similar to theirs. Earth. Look at that little Earth. They carefully threw, flew through the planet's asteroid belt before landing, even though they were bloated and poor Werbel still had heartburn and brain freeze. Werbel was relieved when they entered Earth's atmosphere. The planet's global warming melted his brain freeze and made it easier to land the spaceship. He could see the glass pyramid from the sky. It was close to the very tall tower. The Martians were going to land in Paris, France. The glass pyramid they were headed to was the Louvre a fine art museum. Inside the museum was a small Martian box, mistaken by humans as a sculpture. After browsing the museum for a while, they came across the box. It was golden, placed on a pedestal, and lit by a spotlight. Werbel and Breedy pried the box open, and out came a pink dragon, 
much too big to fit comfortably inside the box. The dragon was so pleased to finally be out of the box, but explained he was only free if the Martians knew the ancient code to receive the ancient Martian medicine. Nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea, hey, Pepto-Bismol, yelled the Martians. The dragon nodded and smiled before he tossed a pink bottle at the Martians. Werbel and Breedy shared the pink and creamy mint flavored drink. With the first gulp, the heartburn disappeared and the medicine helped cure their rumbling tummies too. The Martians pinked, burped pink bubbles the entire way home. Isn't that fun? Couldn't you just picture like the little bubbles, like a trail of bubbles flying through the earth or flying through the space? On their way back to Mars, we're going to create a new story today. How's everyone feeling um, about starting the stories inspired by something? Start thinking. Start thinking of some objects. Start thinking of things, weird things, things you don't usually use every day. You might not see them in your house. Maybe you might find them at a yard sale. Or maybe it's something that might wash up at the beach. Or you tell me. Give me some ideas of some things. I want a whole list of things and an object. Giant french fries. You know what, Rebecca? Your girl and my own heart. On the hunt for the biggest french fry, have we found the biggest french fry? Are these french fries famous? Is this story about the french fries? Ooh, waffle fries. Oh, waffle fries. So our french fry people have arms and legs and their feet are actually whole potatoes. I like that idea, Sam. This alternate dimension where everything is upside down, there's absolutely no music and all the people are made of french fries with potatoes for feet. And one day this giant dinosaur comes in and eats the big chunk out of their giant magical french fry that basically makes everything work in their universe. How are the french fry people going to feed the dinosaur bird? And it's not just any special dinosaur, it is an ankylosaurus. So they have this giant club tail with spikes coming out of it. And when this dinosaur finally learns to love eating burgers, he gets a voice and he starts to sing and he uses his big club tail to hold the beat. And then you know what? All of a sudden, the french fry universe people have a beat to dance to and the entire civilization of french fry people with potato feet boogie down. If that's not a winning story, I don't know what it is. But we need to figure out how these poor things are going to feed our dinosaur. How, how on earth, how on earth are we going to feed a dinosaur? Like thumbs up, skull, owl. Charlotte wants to see this owl die. And the dinosaur eats the owl and the burger, but it's okay. Because the owl comes back, don't go again. And then we have um, other people are like, we'll just throw the burgers. And then everybody's throwing burgers at the dinosaur and the burgers are bouncing off the dinosaur. And then, see, this is where the little happy ending comes. The french fries are dance fitness fanatics and they all put on their neon spandex outfits and they have a dance fitness party and now the dinosaur is part of their universe and they handmade a french fry neon spandex outfit for the dinosaur who now likes burgers and is making music for the french fry people who don't have any music. It is more magic than the french fry could ever provide them. Okay, you're at home and you're like, this is really cool and I'm kind of into drawing and I want to get involved too. You can. This isn't just for kids. Um, if you've got some teenagers in the house, the teenagers are more than welcome to participate. If you've got some grandparents who like to doodle and draw, by all means, anyone is welcome to participate. It's just about having fun and it's about creating really great stories for kids. So keep it up. I love this. I can't wait to see everybody's french fry pictures. I can't wait to see the dinosaur. I can't wait to see all the neon stuff. But next week we're going to read story number five and come up with story number six. So thank you all so much. I hope you guys are having a great time at home. I hope you get to enjoy the sunshine a little bit. I really look forward to seeing all your creative ideas. Um, thanks for hanging out with me for an hour. Thank you for all the artwork that you're doing. And make sure to share all your crazy ideas and use some of that creativity at home uh, to make someone smile. Because that's what this is all about. It's just making people smile.